Hey, Steve Mignani here at Burnison Auto Wrecking in Burnison, Massachusetts, doing the junkyard crawl with a little story about the Chrysler Slant 6. Now, this is a 1960 Dodge town panel uh, van, as it were, a few years before the A164 kind of became a more formal van. But these were fairly popular. These are also available in power wagon form. This one here, being a 1960, has... Uh, yeah. The first year Slant 6, also known as the Leaning Tower of Power. Uh, in 1959, this would have been a 230 cubic inch flathead 6, but the beauty of the Slant 6 is that 30 degree angle that lays over to the passenger side 30 degrees. The point of that was twofold. It lowers the overhaul height of the engine, which in this application doesn't matter, but in the Valiant and the passenger car, the lower engine allowed for a lower hood line and sleeker styling. But more importantly, by laying the engine over on its side 30 degrees, the intake track could be ram tuned. These long runners right here in that candelabra style intake manifold let that one barrel create slight supercharging effects at certain RPMs. I mean, it's very minor, but it's better than nothing. By contrast, Ford and Chevy inline sixes put the carburetor right next to the head with a log and not such a great design. But again, the slant six was a nice, nice piece. And another thing too about the slant six is by putting the engine on an angle, the water pump wasn't bolted to the front, but rather off to the side in this cast iron extension right here here, which shortened the overall length of the engine. So a whole bunch of smart thinking in the Slant 6. Now here's the thing, 12.5 million Slant 6s were built between 1960 and 1983 in passenger cars, and of course 1987, final year in trucks. That's 12.5 million. But here's the thing, Chrysler also made an aluminum engine. See that inside of there? That light color on the back of that block? That is an aluminum block Slant 6. 1961 and 62, let's dig in. Okay, I gotta say, I love all cars, but I have a sweet spot for Mopars, in particular Slant 6s. And this caught my eye instantly. If we look right here on the back of this Slant 6, here's the flex plate, this is an automatic, but see that light colored material right there? That's aluminum. But here's the crazy part, that is iron. Chrysler used aluminum die cast for the block, iron for the head. Now the aluminum Slant 6 program, the story of that was that when they started designing the Slant 6 in 1958, Chrysler knew that Chevrolet was going crazy with aluminum. They knew the Corvair was coming. They knew the aluminum 215 V8 was coming, all this for 6061. And they said, we want to make this Slant 6 as modern as we can. So in addition to the long ram intake, the 30 degree layover, they said, let's do an aluminum version of this thing. So here it is. Now these were die cast aluminum, which involves high pressure injection molding. And this is a magazine article here from Car Life. This is 1961, uh, May 1961, Car Life magazine. And inside it said, uh, how do they make aluminum engines? And this has a wonderful story all about the new entry in the lightweight sweepstakes, the Chrysler Aluminum Slant 6. And on the right-hand side, there's a cutaway of uh, a Slant 6, but this story goes on to describe the hows and whys, top right or top left. That's the block. Now, if you look at that block, you see the cylinder boards. You can see the ghost of them standing straight up and down on each side. Well, on an iron Slant 6, that's totally flat and there's freeze plugs. So when you see that, that's an aluminum Slant 6. Uh, and again, inside the block is beautiful. They have uh, upper cast iron, uh, bearing saddles that press fit into the block. The lower caps are steel as well. That was all about maintaining uh, temperature and oil pressure wedge and, and all that stuff inside. So really quite advanced. Specific uh, head gaskets on these. Now the downside to the aluminum slant six was the iron head and the gasket and the way that the cylinder bores are freestanding. Now in uh, 19 or 2003, I was a writer from Mopar Muscle Magazine. And I did a three-part series on building an aluminum slant six. And this is part one. And this is the engine I made. It was, it was awesome. Look at that aluminum block, hyper pack slant six. You see the shiny. Now Chrysler painted these blocks when they were new. This was a green one from 1960, 61 Plymouth. I stripped the paint off. I want to see that aluminum. The crazy thing about the aluminum slant six is that there was no badge, no emblem, no label, nothing. You paid like 45 bucks for the aluminum slant six. And what you got was a 64 pound block, which was 70 pounds lighter than the iron one. But there was no fender badge, no sticker on the air cleaner, nothing. Uh, just something in the, on the window sticker. But anyway, the big problem with the aluminum slant six is shown on this page right here. 
That's an iron slant six, and you can see it has a closed deck. To its left is the aluminum slant six with the open deck. See how the cylinder bores are freestanding? Now the bottom picture here shows the pen. The pen indicates where coolant corrodes the aluminum parent, exposing the freestanding iron bore. What then happens is there's nothing left to pinch the head gasket, and usually within a few years, if you didn't change your coolant on a religious, regular basis, you wound up with a cylinder head blowing piece of junk. So that was the fate of most aluminum slant sixes. Now here's the thing, of the 12.5 million slant sixes made between 1960 and uh, 1987 when they went out of production, only 55,000 were aluminum block versions, and this is one of them. Um, pretty cool piece. Now the crazy thing about the aluminum block is the iron head and the head gasket was a multi-layer piece. You can kind of see the edge of it right there. And the multi-layer construction allowed the, in the head and the uh, aluminum block to expand and contract at different rates without tearing. So pretty exotic stuff. But something else about the iron head was it was specifically cast with high tolerance. If you look right here, it says special right there. That's cast into the head, the word special. That's particular to the aluminum cylinder block. These are the heads that had a, a high accuracy casting, no core shift, and that ensured that the cylinder combustion chamber was centered over the cylinder, so the gasket had the best shot at pinching and sealing. So that is so rare, unbelievable. There's two versions. There's one that has a star and the special one. That is so cool. That is, is just hen's teeth. This is a unicorn of the Slant 6 world right here at Burniston Auto Wrecking. Now, my experience with these engines in California when I lived out there, I found like three or four of these things in a junkyard, and they were almost always rotten. When I say that, I mean that they had problems with the cylinder bores, but I did find a good one, and I built an, an aluminum hyperpack slant six, and here it is right here. Now, this car I sold to a guy in Australia, and in fact, this magazine is Chrysler Action from Australia. This is from uh, 2003, I think. Uh, yeah, 2013, but I sold to a guy in Australia, and he, had, he got it featured in a magazine, but again, here is my aluminum hyperpack right there, and uh, it was cool. Now, the thing with uh, Australian Valiants, they were all four doors. So my buddy Dave Mahoney bought mine in California, my two-door post. He shipped it to Australia, where it was a unicorn, truly. Australians had never seen two-door Valiants. And it's kind of sweet of him. He gave me a thanks to Steve Mignanti right there, the guy who built the car. I sold it to him for 7,000 bucks. And here lately, he, wants, he only wants 25,000 for it. So I guess he did pretty good on that deal. But anyway, that's the story of the aluminum slant six. You know, 12.5 million leaning tower of power. They, today, they seem like an iron lung, nothing too exotic. But back in 1960, the ram tuned intake, the laid over design was pretty exotic. And especially the aluminum block right there. These are rare. Uh, I'm almost tempted to pull that thing out of here and build it. I know better now. I've done a bunch of these. In fact, I got to say, uh, maybe five, ten years ago, uh, for uh, Mopar Muscle Magazine, I did a dyno test on aluminum slant six, and the damn thing blew a head gasket. Watch this video. Well, it looks like we blew a head gasket. Yeah, the problem there was that uh, we had like four different intake manifolds, a one barrel, a two barrel, a short ram, a long ram. And after the 23rd dyno pull, the head gasket called it quits and it popped that hose off. And the engine was rebuildable, but that was, that was it for me. I built a bunch of slant sixes. Now I'll leave this one, I think, right here. But if you like this video, well, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. Always remember, aluminum slant sixes, yep, they made it.